how it started. I don't know what you did. Now I'm the gal that's chasing you up to flip my lid. Hello and welcome to Was That an Orgy? Starring Charlene and Teresa Bod, two sisters that explore the topics of sex, sexuality, gender, and sex positivity. We will also try to answer the question, was that an orgy? Was it? Oh my gosh, was it? Inquiring minds want to know. Wait, you're not my sister. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Who is that? And what, what have oh you done? Oh my gosh. So the beloved Teresa is home. Yeah. Feeling a bit sick today. I'm oh, in bed. Oh, look at me. I'm all cut off. I'm just yeah. a human. Oh. <laughs> oh, on my screen, on my screen, you guys are all big and I'm just in this little lower right corner. Ooh, oh. Look at that. Well, Spin now you are. For dude. Sure. I am dang. so well hung in the hands right now. Oh, dude, your but, fingers, yeah. man. Whoa. It's if like having a hand with five totally dicks on you. it. I yeah. would totally date you, dick hand. Right? <laughs> mm, yeah. There's a porno that's called, like, I think it's called Edward Dick Hand. So he's got dick. <laughs> I've seen it. It's pretty good. Yeah, awesome. sorry I couldn't, couldn't come in. I'm, I'm home with, a, I think, a case of toxic cock syndrome. Oh my this God. Guy. So I just I'll figured. Just stay oh. away. <laughs> oh. 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 I thought, I'd, thought I'd bring the, the gimp into this one. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's yeah. pretty very, very bad boy. Oh, very bad. <laughs> yes. 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 So, but you know, clearly I need some instructions. So that's why, that's why you're here, Autumn. <laughs> God bless you. Well, I can definitely good. help you with that. There you go. I love that. You. <laughs> yeah. So today on our show, really quickly, I just want to, I just want to introduce Goddess Autumn is Hello. here with us Yay! today. Hi, Autumn. I'm so, so excited to, to have here. you. Thank you for having yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. Pleasure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Nice, yeah. nice meeting you it. in cyberspace. I know. I was hoping yeah. you'd be here. I know, me too, but I don't want to breathe on you. Yeah, you never know these things. Yeah. Anyway. Although that's a that's a hell of a way to um, you know, guarantee you can quarantine with someone. Yeah. You know, if you want to yeah. spend some extra time with someone, go ahead and get them really sick and then yeah. they have They're stuck with you. you. Yeah. Just get yeah. real close. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then Just cough like on us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's what I did with this guy. A, make it a sexy cough, though. Yeah. Make it a sexy cough. <laughs> oh, that was good. That, that was, was good. Really good like yeah. that. <laughs> I was trying to squeeze my cleavage together while I was coughing. Oh, oh that's a good one, too. Yeah. <laughs> For a little motor coughing. <laughs> yeah. It's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Oh, Shar, sure, do you recognize this? What? What is it? Oh, we have a little bit of a delay in the video, so I'm going to have to see oh, yeah, what, what you pull up. Oh, is it the Jesus dick? Yeah. <laughs> yes, what? I do. My old friend, that, that blue crucifix. Oh, my God, that's Jesus amazing. Is it's my bed shrine. I bought yeah. it for a burning man in 2002. Yeah, 2002. Yeah. And I, I had this whole like nun costume, Ooh. but I was like a sexy, naughty nun, of yes. course. Yeah. yeah. And I, I used it later for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there is a delay, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, just on the video, pretty much. Oh, okay. Okay. I yeah. used it years later to be a, a nun for the Church of Satan. Oh, and I painted my face all red. That's how I inherited it accidentally from you. Sorry. <laughs> 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 put to good use so oh yay. don't tell me that yeah yeah well i mean no i mean i didn't i never used it like that I mean, you know oh, no. i mean <laughs> i know i kind of feel like it should get used at least once yeah but maybe that needs to be video documented when it Absolutely. gets used uh, it's it's documented. yes mm -hmm. exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get some tips. <laughs> oh my God. I'm turning you guys up. I'm turning you on. Oh, you're there turning you us. Turn it up. <laughs> Turn it up. <laughs> Turn it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
You can't not dance. I know, totally. I have to. I have to get my hands in the air. Yeah. And wave them like you just don't care. Wait, my tits are going to pop out. I can't do that. Oh, my God. So, Teresa, I have to tell you, I've been dying to tell you, and I've been holding on to it because I knew we had today coming. What? But as always, I was testing the boundaries with my partners, mm -hmm. and I did as it you do. It was so fucking funny. Oh boy, do tell, do yeah. tell. So um I was with I was with a partner and um and I was like, I just got this impulse to test. It, it may or may not have been THC related. And I was like, it's legal, you can say that. Yeah, yeah. So I brought out Charlie. I brought out Charlie. And oh, so I was yes. like, <laughs> so oh. I was like, I'm gonna use the Charlie voice on him. And I was like, yo, yo, red. <laughs> What you're going to do is you're going to split that pussy wide open, okay? I want you to fucking pound it. All right. Stuff it like a fucking Thanksgiving toy key. <laughs> you actually did this? I, I actually okay. did this. I actually did this oh during intimate moments, and it was really funny. Of course. Oh, I love it. It was <laughs> like, it was a great way to. I know. <laughs> exactly. I know. It was a I great know. way to prolong the experience oh. because. <laughs> no one's getting close when you talk like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm from New England and you sound like my my uncle or my grandfather. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> Get over <laughs> here. All right, Red. So what you're going to do is I want you to fucking jam that cock in the back of my throat. All right? <laughs> Real hot. Real hot. Real hot. Okay? All right. Just It's like a pocket pussy. Just get it all in there. Okay? I love it. Yeah, yeah. And smutter that pie with cheddar cheese and pop it in a microwave. Exactly. <laughs> we had, we had a guy we that. worked for who would say that. I read, I want you to take a slice of apple pie and smutter it with cheddar cheese, pop it in the <laughs> microwave and get that cheese all nice and melty. Yeah, and then go go make me a chocolate egg cream so I can wash oh, it down. Shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You gotta love that accent. I know, yeah. totally. It's so great. Yeah, it's so fucking great. It's fun to do, and actually, it made um, it made dirty talk like less intimidating. I was like, wow. Well. <laughs> hey, that's go. a good way to start. Yeah. Like, and then when you're driving your car, you can use your like your dom voice when yeah. no one can hear you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Practice other voices. Just yeah. be like, it's, it's just another you. voice. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh, Which my. actually, I want to hear more about this dom voice because uh, I know exactly. You know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not your quintessential Dom character, obviously. Um, I, I lead with dork in life. So, but, you know, I, I think that that would be a fun thing to kind of like play with and practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know how we all have like a dog voice? I yeah. mean, you got to channel your inner Dom voice. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, like, maybe like pretend like you're a phone sex operator. Let me hear Oh, it. you know what? <laughs> I do. I do dom my dog, so maybe oh, I should you just... dom your dog. Maybe yeah, I totally do. So your voice that you use when you're mad at your dog. Yeah, and I'll just tell some guy like, Did "You fucking piss on my floor again," and then I'll rub his nose in it. And then, like, yes, you know, bank him on the ass. There are tons of puppies that would probably really enjoy that. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so puppies. Yes, puppies. Yes. Let's talk about puppies. Puppies will make them sleep. Yeah. No puppies. Oh, oh, puppies. P U P P I E S. P -U -P -U. Yeah. P U. So, puppies are like young, young, sweet, or older, sweet people who like to be puppies. Yes. Mm. In life. Uh huh. Yeah. Or, and there's also pets, which, like, oh, okay. you know, they may have some, like, <laughs> like pet like, you know, you know, things that they like to do, but they're not like a full on puppy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Puppies oh. like are very much, they want to play like that role. Oh. Um, and pets, like I have my own personal pet, oh. um, very adorable. Um, oh. So he oh. likes to pet and like do puppy like things, but he's not a full on puppy. So he's not wearing <laughs> yeah. like the puppy face mask no. and stuff like that. Okay. No. And that's a good distinction to make because I, I think in the last hump that I saw, which wasn't the most recent one. It was the one before that. There were two like films that had people doing kind of puppy play, but it was very right. specific puppy play, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is different from pet. Yeah. Because yes. pet okay. is more, 
is pet more like a um kind of a dynamic of kind of power and um subservience or yeah yeah there's some service you know everybody's different of course but you know mm-hmm. there's some service there's some like petting and like pet like um things that they like to do but um yeah my pet likes to provide like service and he also like pets you know <laughs> and so he does like really like charming little things that are just adorable um and he's also like submissive, you know, so there's mm-hmm. a power dynamic. I have a question. Yeah. Um, do pets ha- have like a, a, a mammalian identity or they don't, I guess they don't even have to be mammals. But, you know, is a pet ever just sort of like a general amorphous pet or is the pet like always a specific species? Mm. Well, I guess, you know, I've seen like at Kingfest a pet you know, not a puppy. It was like this person dressed like a tiger in a cage, you know, mm. so a pets can go from like one end of the spectrum to the other. Like it's so unique when it comes to every person. My pet, I call him a pet, but he's mm. more like my submissive that's, mm-hmm. you know, pet like in some ways. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, a it. companion who you have like this kind really specific kind of relationship with that that like where they're submissive and you're in a dominant role and yeah yeah oh, that's very cool does that okay so if you're like when you're sort of petting your pet and everything does that are you kind of more of a service top or are you can you describe a little bit about that like that yeah. sort of relationship? Well, um, in my personal life, mm-hmm. I would say I am more of a service top. Like, mm-hmm. I'm a very nurturing personality, you know, mm-hmm. as a massage therapist. And that's kind of why my domination kind of went in a more nurturing, healing direction. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I can be, like, dominant when it's, like, playtime. Uh-huh. But, like, <laughs> the, the tone otherwise is, like, very endearing. Yeah. You know, very nurturing, very like sweet. Um, mm-hmm. And I, you know, it's like an exchange of kindness. Like mm-hmm. he does things for me and I do things for him. And, you know, I'm always in charge. But, you yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you're, you're like a benevolent, <laughs> benevolent dom sort of role, like generally. Question. Yeah. Yeah. Question from the ignorant audience. Yes. Um, uh, so I'm just curious when you say, without like asking you to divulge uh, details you don't feel comfortable with, when you say, I do things for him and he does things for me, I'm just wondering about a general ballpark. Like, does he make you a hot dog or does he act like a pet while he's doing things? <laughs> hey, that's a really good question. So, um, you know, it depends on what I'm in the mood for. So I like him to come over and put on his sexy underwear and clean my house. Oh, <laughs> oh I love that too. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I like, um, I like him to run me a bath and bathe mm. me. Oh, and wash nice. me. Um, and, you know, I give him massages and hurt mm. him just the, like, just the way that he likes. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Nice. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure there's, like, a lot of emotional, like, giving that you're doing, too. It's, like, I think a lot of people kind of look at that and they go, like, yeah, I'd love to have someone come over and clean my house. But it's, like, there is... There is an affection and there is like this giving of energy back and forth with someone like that. So I'm sure that I'm sure that it's not just like, oh, you're just sitting back going like, oh, and I take and take and take, you know, it's like there is like so much where like I'm sure there is like there are these um, really complex levels of intimacy that you probably develop where it's like. You know, even though you're in a dominant role, you're still like very um, tender and squishy on the inside. Of, yeah, them. absolutely. And, you know, power exchange is all about intimacy and mm-hmm. trust, you know, and it's um, it's not all like harsh, you know, mm-hmm. that, that that's all within boundaries and, you know, things that are consented, you know. Um, yeah. 
in, in knowing, you know, what triggers your submissive has and, and respecting boundaries and making sure they feel safe um, mm-hmm. and cared for as well, you know? Yeah. yeah. There is. Oh, go for it. In ignorant audience time. No, um, girl. So, so it sounds like, uh, as I'm learning, your pet doesn't necessarily have to identify with a species. It's, you know, more just kind of a metaphorical term. Um, and that, um, and like, is there, do you talk to them like a pet too? Like, good boy, you know, like, good boy, <laughs> you know, and, and is there, are there like treats involved, positive rewards? I mean, that could get sexy, I imagine, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sex is the number one motivator. <laughs> totally. <laughs> number Fuck one food. food right? I mean, we'd all starve and have sex if we had our way. That's right. Yeah. There's, there's many forms of Scooby snacks, booby snacks, booty snacks. <laughs> yeah, there are punishments and rewards um, mm. and a leash. Oh, my. You know? Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah especially for peeing on the floor. Oh, well, yeah. There's no sure. peeing on the floor. Ooh, okay. Chris oh. has a comment. Nice. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Oh, hi, Goddess Autumn. Great to see so many goddesses today. Why, thank you. (laughs) Um, Question, I understand you are a dom. Can you tell us what you feel are the main differences between male and femdom, if there are any? Hmm. Well, I think that, you know, it's a domination, um, you know, just like exuding that that feminine energy, right? Um, and, and masculine energy, you know, the differences between that. But I think the ways that we dominate someone can be very similar. It's just mm-hmm. um, presenting, you know, feminine, mm-hmm. you know, instead of masculine. I would say that would be like the biggest difference. Yeah. Yeah. Everything else is the same. You know, we can have a dick too. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. absolutely. <laughs> we can choke you and pull your hair and slap you around just like any male would, you know? <laughs> absolutely. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. That's a great question, though, because I, yeah, I've been thinking a lot about feminine and masculine energy and like, so, and it came about because I was thinking about like, oh, if I'm, if I'm the lead character in my own life, how do I identify? And I was like, oh, dude, I don't actually, di- I completely identify with female energy. It's like more kind of like they, them, like somewhere in the middle kind of energy. So it is like how, and I could see a woman bringing really masculine energy to doming or very feminine, powerful energy. Like there's, there's power in all of the different ways you can go about it. True that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <That's fine>. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, pardon me. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god, it sounded like someone like nutting. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goddess, indeed. Sorry, <laughs> that burrito I had for breakfast. Freeze <laughs> bod. Shame on you. <laughs> True dad. Yeah. So okay, I'm curious. So you talked about being a licensed massage therapist. And you're also a dom. And like, how did that, how did that transformation happen for you? I'm so curious about this too, because I'm a massage <laughs> therapist too. Yeah. 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 So you already dominate people in a very yeah. soft, sensual way. So yeah. consider yourself a dom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tea bag, you're all you're like, that. get undressed and wait for me until I come back. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Still, that'd be great. Now it's time to get up. <laughs> relax, relax. <laughs> Let your arm go. Yeah, <laughs> same good. thing. God, you're just right. Put the, just I put that sexual that. energy behind it. You yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. god, you're a pro already. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I I am curious about the point where, like, did you go through this where it was like people for years and years and years and years and years and years were always telling me like, oh, Tracy, you'd make such a great dominatrix, and I think it's because of this angular you know germanic planes in my face and i'm loud and obnoxious um but <laughs> then I, I had a hard time with imagining uh, sorry i had a hard time with imagining like um causing anyone pain and then like the recent shift that happened in my mind is that you know um well if if they like it then maybe you're still being of service and healing in some way 
I don't yeah. know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did absolutely. you go through that? I, I definitely did. Because, um, I, you know, want to make sure that I'm not crossing any boundaries. And, you know, that's when you build mm-hmm. on pain and it's that communication. Um, and as a massage therapist, I think that, you know, you're really intuitive anyway in that nonverbal communication. So you can right. feel when someone wants more without words mm-hmm. and, um, right. and and talking about it in detail ahead of time really like allowed me to like feel confident in hurting someone. Mm-hmm. And then it felt really empowering too, you know, not only for the person receiving the pain and, and transforming that into something pleasurable, but also for me, like it was really empowering and like a release to like be that strong right and and Mm -hmm. and give someone also what they need you know yeah yes daddy (laughs) you're giving them daddy (laughs) oh my (laughs) it's like you're giving them a cathartic moment it's like in that transformation of pleasure into pain they're it's like they're letting something loose in themselves and that's really an amazing thing that really is really really difficult for a lot of people to achieve mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's really healing <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> oh my wow. oh my Another animal in the house Sorry, geez, <laughs> again, <I'm> just, oh <laughs> <God>. <laughs> um, <laughs> I could imagine, too, like um, women being trained, uh, conditioned in society to constantly be um, sort of like subservient, acquiescing, that there could be a lot of empowerment in, you know, kind of having more of that. I'm going to choose all the wrong words now, but like, you know, I mean, domineering is obvious, you know, but uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know, like there's a sternness. There can be a I don't know. There's something about inflicting pain. Me no have words. Shar, you always read my mind. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, is there kind of an internal conflict that happens between kind of, um, so the way that our society sort of tailors women or feminine bodied humans to be agreeable mm-hmm. and then getting into that space and, and kind of, how do you, how do you navigate that kind of going back and forth in those spaces? <laughs> well, I think that um, for me, um, you know, allowing myself to to be dominant was one of the most healing things that I've ever done in my life. You know, mm-hmm. like taking my power back, mm-hmm. you know, from right. from, you know, past trauma and all of these things and just, you know, societal expectation, you know, yeah. Like, fucking the patriarchy right yeah so um you know I think that there's like not a need for like transition right like I am who I am and I feel like that's really empowering but you know just I can tell you one thing I can't switch gears from like domination session to massage session (laughs) but I think that you know carrying that with me knowing that that is who I am not just Mm -hmm. like when I'm in the dungeon but like I have like taken my power back and like I can do these things you know that is awesome yeah yeah that is awesome it sounds very (laughs) liberating because I do feel like that's once you start getting into a space you know as as a female-bodied individual like you um once you get into a space of kind of ignoring your power or shutting it down or making it smaller so that you can fit in to start letting it creep back out and letting it get bigger and let it, let it get right sized for who you are. Like that's a really powerful feeling. It's, it's really amazing. And I think that's what a lot of this is about is like people finding their space to heal and to grow and to become the right size for who they really are and confident. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's all about confidence, you know? And I think that that sexual confidence, especially for women, you know, and, and our like ways, our Puritan ways we were taught, you know, be a lady, yeah, you know, don't be a slut is a bad thing. You know, and we're taking that, like, you know, I'm so grateful for this movement of like, you know, sex positivity and, yeah. you know, like women yeah. being able to be dominant and, you know, that's becoming more and more common, I feel. Yeah. I have another, I have another question. Um, it made me think of a couple of things that was making me think of um, how much liberation there could be there for so many people to be able to experience and explore who have, you know, whether they're more, you know, uh, raised in 
female gendered bodies or whether they just naturally have taken on more of a subservient acquiescing position in society, how much liberation there can be and being able to um, step into those uh, big boots. And uh, it, it made me think of first how like um, I, I never acted ever in my life until um, one of my bands wrote um, Jaws the Musical and I got to play Celine Dion and I just made, I got to play this big diva. I made her a bitch. I know she's really nice, but I thought it was fun to just play a bitch. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, man, I really got off on being able to play this like dummy diva. And that's what I'm imagining is really, you know, uh, interesting and enticing about trying on like doming, you know, in the way that you do. And then I thought, like, are there opportunities for people to take classes on doming and oh, get, get, mm -hmm. they're yes. able to have an experience like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I offer, <laughs> yeah, I offer lesson sessions and yeah. their doms, like giving them like helping them build confidence. Um, yeah. You know, so what do you want to learn? Degradation, some flogging, some Wonderful. Sexy, like, oh. <laughs> This is so exciting. <laughs> and there are there's a link to your website in the show notes. Thank I you. I just want to put that out there for everyone. So and yeah. Just out of curiosity, um, can people I mean, I was it, it all my mind is free associating, but I was thinking about those uh fucker wear parties, those pleasure parties, you know, where people hire oh. someone to come like, is that a potential too that someone could like make a little group class and have you come teach a little oh. group class? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Count me oh, in. God, oh, that'd be amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And also, I'm part of Sub Rosa, which is mm -hmm. uh, an amazing um, fetish boutique um, rentable for private parties, but yeah. also um, yeah. such a great group of doms that, um, and sexy entrepreneurs. Like They also hold classes. So if you check out their website, yeah. I think their link is below. They have tons of classes like mm -hmm. from rope to dominance to, you know, breath work and and all kinds of things so. yeah so Very we definitely cool. have the link in the show notes and um this is a female owned business right mm -hmm. am i okay yeah. <laughs> i was like that was my impression and um yeah so it i'm i haven't been there but my intention is to go and oh my god you know what i just realized Shar, as we as i see this question on there a minute ago um while y'all were talking uh, Chris had another question, and I don't think we got to it. And it, it was oh, about yeah. being invited to a party. Yeah, there it is. It was about the three-way being invited to a threesome. Okay. Um, where there's going to be – it's kind of a BDSM oh, threesome. Okay. And with people he doesn't know super well on that level, and do you have like some – I would say like intro BDSM kind of questions that you ask to get a feel for someone, or is there a good resource to go to for that sort of thing? Hmm. Well, I don't know of a good resource off the top of my mm -hmm. head, but, you know, personally, if I was invited to a threesome and I didn't know them very well and BDSM was involved, I want to meet all of them ahead of time, mm -hmm. you know, just have like a casual like coffee, have a drink mm -hmm. and kind of talk to them like about their experience with BDSM um, yeah. and what are their hard limits, you know, what what's going to happen, like what are your limits and mm -hmm. What are your do's and don'ts? I think that communication is really important and communication without feeling the pressure to do anything right then. That's why I say don't go in there and mm -hmm. like have like everyone's like, you know, dressed in their yeah. leather ready to go. <laughs> um, I think that it would be better just to get a feel for the other people's energy mm -hmm. and, you know, that connection and then, you know know their experience, know their limits, know yours as well, mm -hmm. and kind of talk about what you want to happen, what you don't want to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and if the vibe feels right, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? for, yeah. That's just for like casual play, right? Like, you know, um, so that's kind of what you're recommending they do. Like, it's surprising to me how much um, uh, work actually goes into these play dates, like that people actually meet beforehand and, and have this get to know you and what you want session beforehand. This is kind of a common thing that happens. Or yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that um, depending, like, so we do a lot of play parties, like um, 
at Sanctuary, you know, I don't mm-hmm. know if you've ever been there, but you, yeah. I saw you there. Yeah. Um, so there <laughs> is like a lot of casual play with people that you just meet. And um, I think that in that case, like a conversation and also mm-hmm. like, like knowing that you want to play with them because of what you observe, you know, mm-hmm. from them Absolutely. and just like, um, and then, you know, also like that conversation is important but I would say like you know of course if you're like going to someone's house that you don't know like you want to make sure that you're being safe and you know things like that (laughs) um you don't want to get locked in somebody's dungeon and never (laughs) set free you know and then we read about you in the newspaper you know I don't know (laughs) like safety safety is everything um and you know being restrained um like you want to be able to trust that person and know that they're not going to cross your boundaries you know because you're mm-hmm. putting like complete like especially if you're the one that's being submissive you know like you're putting a lot of trust into that person like mm-hmm. what if you're gagged what if you're completely bound by all fours like mm-hmm. you want to make sure that you are going to feel safe and respected yeah. and your boundaries won't be crossed you mm-hmm. know? So, I have two questions mm-hmm. Um, one is there is is there something that you you do to ensure your safety like when you're going over to someone's place that you don't know like do you text uh, their f- address to somebody to yourself or you know how do you prevent um, yeah things going wrong in that regard and then the other thing is how do you if you if you have a ball gag in your mouth some kind of a gag how do you communicate a safe word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that would be like hand signal, blink, or you're doing it with someone that really knows you mm-hmm. and knows your limits. Like, I don't mm-hmm. need a safe words with people that I know, you yeah, know I what see. I mean? But um, I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't go to like a BDSM party mm-hmm. <laughs> in somebody's yeah. dungeon that I don't know. But if yeah. you are, like, meet them beforehand, <laughs> you know, like, don't just go, you know, night. I wouldn't. I, yeah. You know. Yeah. I guess what was coming to my mind is like, I, well, and you maybe can't answer this, but like how professional doms deal with that. Oh, you know, like how do they deal with? Yeah. So like vetting a client, um, I have learned, um, you know, luckily I'm part of like a really great, you know, Sub Rosa and we really help each other out where we, um, we have meetings and skill shares and we talked a lot about this. Um, and I think that um, there are some key questions, open-ended questions that I ask my clients and depending on how I feel about their answers, either I'll accept them as a client or I know that they're not a good fit. You mm-hmm. know, if I feel like that conversation or that answer to that open-ended question is a little iffy I'll ask more questions but you know if I don't feel safe or I feel like they're going to try to push my boundaries you know mm-hmm. top from the bottom that's a no-no yeah. um, I don't <laughs> accept them as a client yeah, yeah. Mm, good good um, how do you how do you kind of distinguish between bratty subs and topping from the bottom that's that's, <laughs> like a, that's a very Star. fine line it is such a fine it? line <laughs> um <laughs> You know, I think that there's a difference between being bratty and wanting to get punished uh-huh. or a punishment. Um, <laughs> <Punishments>. Or, <laughs> yeah, that's what I like to call them. <laughs> um, or um, they're being like really specific, like, I want you to wear this. Uh, yes. I want this scene mm-hmm. and say these things. You know, um, that feels like yeah. patriarchy to me. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So anything that feels like normal patriarchal bullshit, you're yeah. gonna be like, "There's I- like a- I would at least be like, eh, no, thank you." Yeah. Like yeah. being rowdy is like there's a like a bounce back and forth. Like mm-hmm. he he he. Okay. Yeah. You know. And then there's like, well, I want it this way. No, you know, like yeah. No. And I yeah. imagine they comply yeah. when you really step up the domineering, right? That oh, I just. Sus- restrain them if they're not complying (laughs) (laughs) i love it (laughs) oh and also there was another question we didn't get to oh yeah that's right go back to that okay it's gonna come up in a sec i see it do you want me to read it yeah go for it it says good evening goddess Could you talk a bit more about the relationship between pleasure and pain? I personally have always felt the pleasure 
needs to always be a bit greater than the pain. Agree or disagree? Inquiring minds want to know. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> 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 drum roll please um well i think that um pain is all about perception um so people have different relationships and feelings about pain you know when you're talking about a pain scale somebody's three might be someone else's seven, you yeah. know, on the pain scale. So I think that that's all about perception. But recently, you know, I've had many new clients, um, or people, not new clients, but clients that are new to kink. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's really fun to experiment with pain. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are very surprised about how much they enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And um, how like, when you're using like that sexual energy behind it, how different it feels, yeah. you know, that's very different than like, if, you know, right. someone just stubbing your toe, you yeah. know, <laughs> you know, like if somebody's sure. flogging your toe, but also like grabbing Ouch. your ass. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, right. <laughs> um, I think that, um, you know, so changing your perception about mm -hmm. pain would be what, what happens, um, right. with BDSM. Right. Yeah, yeah, that kind of reminds me of like what I've heard is one of the potential healing aspects of BDSM is that if you are uh, inviting the pain, you know, that you actually develop a different relationship with the pain because of that. You don't feel like a victim to it. You know, you're asking for this. You're asking for and consenting to receiving pain. Mm -hmm. So there's it's actually liberating, you know, and can be potentially healing. Yeah, absolutely. What I've heard. Yeah. yeah, you're you're kind of transforming it into a positive experience. Mm -hmm, so right. people, you know, with past like traumas or negative experiences, um, well, you know, that's what a lot of pro doms like. Well, I do especially is like creating like a new, a new experience with a positive outcome, with with right. your consent, you know, mm -hmm. with your control, and you know, a lot of nurturing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is so much to that too, the nurturing part and the kind of letting go part where you're like, okay, for the next hour, you're in control of my body. And mm -hmm. that, that's a really fantastic feeling to just sort of like trust someone and let someone go with that and know, especially once you've established a rapport with someone to just know that they know you well enough to go exactly to the edge and mm -hmm. not, not beyond. Yeah. Yeah. It can be like a really like transcending experience, yeah. you know, just be able mm. to let go completely. Yeah. And like, yeah. <laughs> it's great. Now you can hear all the sound effects. Normally we're just oblivious while Michael. I know, out. exactly. <laughs> we're just like not reacting at all. Yeah. And things are <laughs> turtles are humping shoes and we have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, i'm just curious the name sub rosa where'd that come yeah. from um you what know, does the rosa mean we'd actually have to ask the owners oh yeah <laughs> because i don't actually know the story of how they came up with that name but you know sub yeah. rosa maybe city of roses mm. Mm. You know? sub rosa. that's what i kind of think of when i hear yeah. that name. or the sub is going to be really rosy when they leave <laughs> well, that's you. you know, oh, I'm going to paint you red. <laughs> right? That's right. Yeah. No rosy cheek, all of them. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. That was one thing that I noticed at, um, at some of the more intense sort of BDSM events that I've been to where it's like talking about painting and like oh, yeah. the idea of the marks sort of being a painting or, or art form of sorts. And I've never thought about that because I've always been like, e, don't bruise me. I'm so white. I'm going to bruise up, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I think there is like definitely an art form to that too. And like doing it more deliberately and and knowing exactly how your partner is going to, like how their body's going to react to things too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Once you, you know, cr establish like an ongoing relationship with someone, you get to really know like 
what's going to bruise them Mm -hmm. and how long it's going to stay and like how many (laughs) days are you going to think about me (laughs) i'm gonna give you a reminder (laughs) seven days that's right (laughs) people really like the marks on the floor (laughs) some people really get into the marks like fetishize being left with marks on them oh yeah yeah absolutely it's Mm -hmm. kind they're very proud of them yeah Oh, absolutely, oh. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, there's a second part to your question? What? No. Oh. Oh. oh, now you know who it was. <laughs> oh, wait. This is the old question. Yeah. Oh, we have another new question. Oh. <laughs> Okay, it says, have you seen crossover between electric play and fire play? Oh, I'm fairly wow. good with electric play techniques, but totally ignorant about fire play. And I bet there are things to explore there. Oh, fire play. <laughs> I actually don't dabble in either of those things, mm-hmm. but... I will say at Kingfest, people get very creative. Um, oh. Yeah. So I'm sure that like, you know, because I don't, I don't know, like the electric play and the fire, I think that mixing them could be very dangerous, but you know, I don't, I don't <laughs> dabble in that. So I'm not really sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't imagine mixing. <laughs> that would be yeah. interesting. Yeah. I feel like. Uh, you know, kind of just off the cuff, it seems like electric would be so much easier to control. Right. Because you actually have like a knob, like a volume knob sort of thing. But like, oh, yeah. Right. With fire, it's like you'd really have to experiment and really know what you're doing. Fire yeah. bad. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Wow, that's true. <laughs> yeah. No, no. <laughs> but I like, did see somebody get tased at king fest no like the yeah. like the police taser kind uh-huh. of real thing well <gasps> what was happening was oh. there was a little bit of needle play uh-huh. all the way up their leg oh they then tased it up and down <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. and it was amazing Oh wow. my god! And I could not stop watching. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I bet they had some powerful reaction to that. Oh yeah! Wow. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh my god! Wow. But then, like a smile after. Like, oh yeah! <laughs> I bet the endorphins are incredible from yeah. that. <laughs> question from the from the ignorant peanut gallery. Um, yeah, peanut. Do you know, if there you can control. There's a setting I assume you can control on a taser so that it's not you know, just full on knock you out all the time, but like you can control it so that it's just, you know, Uh, a little little spark. Well, if you want to tase someone, make sure you buy a taser with that setting. Otherwise, uh, like a violet wand, uh, they have like settings. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What's a violet wand? Like tens units. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. A violet wand is, is like, um, it's basically like an electric uh, kind of stimulator thing, and it has different um, kind of adapters you can put in it, and, and a lot of them look like light bulbs, and those are very gentle, and they'll like kind of give you a little tingly feeling, and you're like, <laughs> you know, um, mm. and then there are some that are like a metal rod, and that'll give you a very kind of sharp feeling. Um, someone can turn themselves into a conductor Ooh. by wearing the metal plate against their body and then their hands create the conduction. Um, Ooh, that's or, yeah. It's really, <laughs> and it's so funny because I thought I would hate it. And then when I started playing with it, I actually really loved it. And what was really fun for me is um, one night uh, we were at a place and um, they put uh, the conductor on me. So I was the conductor and then different people would just come up and touch me and get shocked. Yeah, <laughs> That was really fun. That sounds That's so great. fun. I want to yeah. be the conductor. I know. I know. I exactly. look into this as soon yeah. as I leave. Like, because I have these things called vamp gloves. They're like my yes. most, I love, they're my favorite toy. Ever. I love vampire gloves. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. yeah. So I like people to touch me with them. I yes. like to touch people with them. And if you don't have any Teresa, you as a massage therapist must have these. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what well, what are they? They do they have like metal nails on them or something? 
They have like little tiny, so they're like leather gloves that you put on your hands and there's mm-hmm. little tiny spikes. So it's like mm-hmm. sensation, but you can also make them like a little spicy, like give yeah. them a massage, like, you know, wow. kind of grab yeah. them, claw them lightly. Yeah. 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 Like, like, like little perfect. claws kind of like where the nails are. Yeah, like they're little tiny spikes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've yeah. seen I've seen ones that are more DIY where it's like seriously knit gloves and you basically put like um kind of thumbtacks, but the kind of flat back thumbtacks in them. And I've had people ask me to spank them with it. Ooh, and that ah. left a mark. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> I <bet>. Yeah. <laughs> Do you oh, have yeah. to alcohol you swab their butts it. first? What's that? You have to alcohol swab their butts first? I mean, because you could like puncture someone's skin. I don't know. Well, yeah. Well, I guess d- like if you're planning on puncturing, then yeah, yeah you should. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're just like brushing over the skin, like, you know. Yeah. yeah just, you don't like, have to alcohol yeah. swab them. But, but if you're going to give your gimp a spanking, let's uh-huh. Sanitize that. Right? Yeah, that's right. Or at least sanitize the glove. <laughs> Good thinking. Good Make thinking. sure they're up to date on their tetanus shots and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was was this at like a kink festival that you saw this? All this um, stuff. Mine. My experience was at uh, Sensation Play parties. I guess Lovely. parties that included Sensation Play. Titillating. Yes, very. They're the best party. They are. (laughs) And, oh, oh, there's another question. Oh, my goodness. Goddess, can you elaborate a bit on how you can, you and a client can go about setting up a scene? Do you invent the circumstances prior or make it up on the fly? Oh, my. Mm. So, um... I like to have a conversation with the client and ask them about like what their kinks are and what their limits are and what their relationship with pain is. And then I formulate a scene. And sometimes, you know, I'll have like an idea in my head because there's so many wonderful things in that dungeon so <laughs> to play with. So like when I get there, I get there a little early and I pick the music, you know, set the tone, put on the candles. And then I usually pull out some like things that I want to play with. And so I have an idea in my head of like, okay, these are all the things that I want to use. Mm-hmm. But then I let that person's energy kind of guide you know, guide me through that hour. And yeah, Mm. so I kind of like, you know, do a loose idea, you know, know what their kinks are, know kind of like what I want to use on them. Mm -hmm. And then depending on how they're feeling in the moment, I kind of like just follow that. Ah, nice. So it's like a conversation. You're like receiving feedback and then giving additional stimulation based on that feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes there's like specific role play involved, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm going to be, you know, your teacher or Mm -hmm. your mom, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) like whatever. (laughs) Thank you, Greenwald. Thank you very much. I have another question, too. When you refer to the um, uh, the dungeon, is this do you have your own dungeon or do you does Sub Rosa have like a community dungeon that you guys share? Yeah. Yeah. So that is the community space. So we have, you know like a a space that we all book around each other and also like you know the classes are sometimes held there and um yeah so I just um there's like that wonderful space with so many tools and things and I just get to like show up with my lipstick and my outfit (laughs) be ready to go so perfect (laughs) I love it yeah that's great how much time do you intentionally devote to aftercare generally So, um, absolutely. So for an hour session, we're going to do 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. If it's a two hour session, we're going to do 30, Mm -hmm. um, because of like the intensity and, you know, you want to like send them out the door, like in a, in a baseline state, Mm -hmm. you know, feeling good, feeling nurtured, feeling hydrated, Yeah, (laughs) you know, and, you know, um, yeah. So just depending on how long, but like, you know, the rule of thumb for myself is 15 minutes for every hour, Mm -hmm. um, where we need to, and talk about to, you know, like how they feel and what felt good and what do we want to do next time? You know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure like it's, it's whatever, 
you know, whatever they need at, at that moment, you know, you're like, you're going to be reading them and going like, okay, you're, you seem ready to move on to the next thing. You know, you seem ready to walk into a Fred Meyer and buy your oatmeal or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Go get some eggs on the way home. Yeah. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. (laughs) Yeah. That's awesome. Your mom's not going to (laughs) know. Or your wife. I don't know. As long as they don't see those little red marks on your booty, you're good. <laughs> right. Right. I was curious too about the the aftercare. Like, I mean, you know, what does that look like? So you talk about like what they liked, what went well, what they'd want to do next time. Do you wrap them in a blanket? Do you get them a, a glass of warm milk? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so um at sub rosa like there's like giant beds so i usually like start at one you know side of the room and end at that side always and so after care you know i like snuggle them up in a blanket and i usually cuddle with them for a moment mm-hmm. and like you know, sometimes, you know, as aftercare, I like to give them like a little massage and like rub some arnica on all the little marks that I left on them Aww. and, you know, give them Aww. some water and we'll talk like, well, that happens. So, you know, just depending on what they need, like, but I'm all about like snuggles and massage and like, you know, making sure that you feel like cared for, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's so important. Like when you have all those endorphins and the oxytocin and all that stuff in your system, to kind of get that like positive reinforcement through behavior as well. Mm-hmm. And Arnica is a great anti-inflammatory. Oh my gosh, it is. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah. 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 And Buy it, it at your local. <laughs> that's right. It's your local natural foods place um, <laughs> or on Amazon or wherever you want to get it. But it's like they sell topical and then they also sell like pill versions. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. It is very, it's great. Love that stuff. Yeah, me too. <laughs> How, is it, does it, uh, I'm sure that sometimes people get injured. Is it, I imagine it's extremely infrequent that people, you know, get an injury, an actual injury from play. But do you guys sign like waivers or like, how do you deal with that aspect of it? Yeah, so there is a consent form um, that most like doms will have you fill out like on their website. Um, And, um, you know, like safety is everything. Luckily, you know, I've never had anyone that's injured because you're I feel like like a lot of like frequent injuries, um, even like that I saw at King Fest because I was doing massage there. So people would come to me and they'd be like my wrist from being tied up because like your wrists are bound and no matter how careful you are, whether you're tying with rope or like cuffs or anything, you know, the thing that you do is like when you're excited, you're like pulling against Mm -hmm. it and like you don't even you're not thinking about your wrist at that moment. Yeah. (laughs) So like I feel like that's like the thing that like you have to watch out for, um, you know, especially um, you know, just being a dom, just like making sure that they're not too tight and, mm-hmm. you know, you're not in one t- position too long. And, you know, so um, I luckily have never had a problem, but yeah. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> and as a, as a sub, I would say like, if you are in that kind of more sub position or you're restrained or something like that, never endure something. Like, it's really mm-hmm. important that you do listen to your body and that you remain tuned into yourself, that you, you know, if something is pinching, just know that your endorphins are so elevated at that moment that you might actually be hurting yourself by enduring something that doesn't feel like a big deal at the time. But the mm-hmm. next day you might be like, oh, man, I really screwed myself over. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And there's uh, another question from Chris. As a massage therapist, what do you think of the use of impact play guns? Those little massage guns. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think. Oh my God! So I've never used one like oh. in, at any time, but I think <laughs> they would be really fun. Yeah, like have someone tied up. But I have used a buffer. <laughs> Me too. Oh, yeah. I my buffer. Yeah. <laughs> Buffers are really fun, like after you're flogging, a little fuzzy. So like, <laughs> but, but um, I think it would be really fun. So that's yeah. inspiring to me. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> I've actually had someone use one of those um, massage guns on my just like on my glutes because you know glutes like they just carry so much tension, mm-hmm. or at least mine do anyway. 
someone doing that to me. And I swear it was just like the same reaction I would have to being flogged or something where I was like, so it is, it's super intense and it's awesome. Like it feels so good. They get so deep. Yeah. But the buffer, the buffer, I gotta say like for, I think they run like 30 to 50 bucks. Like, Best 30 to 50 bucks you're going to spend because it comes with a terry cloth cover and it comes with a velvety cover. Yes. Oh, lovely. Lovely velvety. Love that velvety cover. And you just throw that cover in the wash. Somebody's butt. Like, I I love it. Two hands. (laughs) I seriously, (laughs) I buff myself all the time. Not on the, not on the Punani, but like, you can Elsewhere, like, like when I work it. out really hard, like, That's like a massage you can gun. use it on your own butt, yeah. you can use it on your quads, it's good. And you're talking about just the, the run-of-the-mill Home Depot car buffer, right? Yeah. Yeah, no shit, dude. Yeah, yeah. I went, with the, and the same day I went and bought a car buffer, and then like six feet of really big fat chains for sensation play, I kind of think they knew what I was up to. <laughs> <laughs> They're like... Gotcha. Yeah. Girl, you're having fun tonight. <laughs> yeah. And a jigsaw, a little jigsaw with some caulk. Does you have like a, a power tool that's like a, a jigsaw dildo fuckinator? Oh, the fuckinator. <laughs> yeah. Fuckinator. So it's um reciprocating saw. So uh-huh, it goes like uh-huh, this. Uh-huh. And then a, a dear friend gave me an adapter that puts that you can put a dick on. And so you can have a dick that goes like this, but it's on a Ryobi (laughs) Ryobi power saw that my dad gave me. (laughs) Don't. Don't (laughs) I think he would laugh. I think. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Yeah, I know exactly. That's the the last power tool you're ever going to get for Christmas. (laughs) Not for me, though. Oh my God. <laughs> Special place in hell for me. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. But the dick that you put on it is, it's like a soft hard on. Cause you don't want to come at someone with a really hard oh, yeah. dick going that fast. No. Yeah. It's got to be similar. Is there like speeds? So yeah, this, but this they're actually intense. the drill he, <laughs> they're the saw he gave me is a really good one. And mm-hmm. so the trigger does like very speed very nicely. Yeah. It's a good one. Sounds good. (laughs) (laughs) I'll bring it out sometime. Yeah, bring it to the next party. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) exactly. I really should. I really should. Our friend friend Chris is so good about bringing like three suitcases to every party and like it's electric stuff and the fuckinator and ropes and all that stuff. And like, I'm always just like, so I I just kind of forget to bring all that stuff. And then like afterwards, I'm like, Oh, that would have been awesome if yeah. I had done that. <laughs> yeah, I do the same thing, you know, I because I don't have to ever bring anything to the dungeon. So I like show up at a right. party. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, exactly. I forgot all my toys. Yeah. <laughs> all he brought was me. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like the Felix of Cat. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> what was that, t Wait, I said Chris is like the Felix the Cat, you know, of like sex parties. Oh, my gosh. He's going to do his bag of tricks. Or That's impressive. impressive. Just well, like opening the coat and like yes. all these things come out. Boop, boop, there boop, you boop, go. Boop, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 well, we're what getting close, that? Char. We've got two more minutes. Are there any two more minutes? Oh my gosh. Questions or comments that Autumn you want to make to our wonderful audience? Yeah. Wunderbar. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Thanks so much for having me. It's such yeah. a pleasure. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate it. So nice to meet you, Teresa. You too. Sorry. You too. <laughs> oh, Next, I'm yeah. to meet in person. Maybe yeah, like we can that. bring you to the dungeon, dress you up. Oh, bring I you would up, so like, love that. Bring I'm like a little best. person, a little subject for you. Yeah. Oh, I love the subject right there. Oh, bring <laughs> him. Yeah. Are you volunteer? Right here. Yeah. Oh, he's a volunteer. Oh, perfect. This is what we'll do. And then we can pick your Dom name. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> yes. Oh, that's, that's a great so idea. Fun. Oh, like, my do you goodness. want to be a goddess, a mistress, oh, a yeah. miss, a princess? You know, Ooh, what's your vibe? Like oh, queen, queen of the latrine. <laughs> queen yeah. of the latrine. Queen latrine. Queen, 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 queen
<laughs> Maybe that should be like. <laughs> we'll incorporate that into your doll name. So I like it. I like it. <laughs> and, then get, and then we can touch base. Then we'll come back on the show and talk about Ooh, it. Maybe do, yeah. I know. What That'd if we've been 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 wanting to do that with some private videos that we can like show? Oh, yeah, you can do some clips. Yeah. So yeah, yeah let's let's chat. Let's chat. Let's, let's do it. We're gonna chat. chat. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then yeah. in the last minute of the show, too, I just want to tell everyone, give Shar money. <laughs> now, now, goddess, now. Sally, now. Yeah. that's right. Goddess demands that you give me money so tell them, Autumn, tell them. You fund the show. Yeah, such a great show, by the way. Thank you so much. Well, you made it awesome tonight. Oh, thank it was you. so yeah. good to have you. Yeah, thank you. Pleasant. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay, yeah. so you're getting oh. it. It's raining on us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Patreon was yeah. an orgy. We also have a Venmo. There we go. Boom. Mm -hmm. That's and right. I think that's about, those are all the ways. And if you're lost and you just want to give me money, send us an email at was that an orgy at gmail.com and I will help navigate you. I will hold your hand all the way to the bank. Yeah. 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 She's good like that. <laughs> yeah. And so kind. I know. As I have a big, too. fat, juicy heart that's just <laughs> wanting to take and take and take. No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. See, oh, it's that time. It's that time, everybody. When we got to say, we will see you next Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, are you calling me a cunt? I am because you're flexible, you're strong, you're That's beautiful. Right. Yeah. And you smell like Vaseline. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Autumn. Thank, thank you, Autumn. Yeah. That was wonderful. I learned so much. I'm so glad. Yeah. Well, I want to see you in the dungeon. dungeon. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Don't know what you did. Now I'm the gal that's chasing you up. I do want to flip my lid. Come and you're eager people, baby. Eager people, baby. Eager people, baby. Eager people, baby. What are you going to do? Eager people, baby. You, no matter where you stop, all you movies, even to the barber shop. Now, we go, people, baby. 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 We go, people, baby.